Hey, Paul, how you doing? All right. I, I enjoyed reading this. Yes. I, I, I especially like the story about the the campus with that AMC and you thought that's where they were made. That's that's cute. I like that a lot. Um, I really enjoyed reading this, but I do want to address this. Hey, many, many years ago, I was um, doing my design work and my wife was, uh, we, had, we owned a small little grocery store, like a convenient grocery store. And one of our employees came from Florida and she had a 1972 AMC Hornet powder blue, clean. And I, I, I remember knocking on the steel on this thing, man. I mean, you could punch this thing. Seriously, you could punch this thing. And the steel, I mean, the steel must have been a quarter inch thick. And of course, I'm exaggerating, but wow, what a difference in how cars are made now. 1972. Make a long story short, the, my employee, our employee said she had run into some financial difficulties and she had to sell her car. So we bought that AMC Hornet in 1972. It was so cool to drive. I, I mean, we might as well have been in a Lamborghini when we drove down the street. Everybody looked and pointed and waved, and it was so cool. Anyways, I thought I'd share that fun little story with you. Um, okay, so uh, you say you struggle a little bit. and Absolutely. It's a tough assignment. It is, but it's also a very, very important assignment as it as it kind of establishes the importance and of, of, of typographic hierarchy as well as establishing and using a grid, both of which are two of the top 10 most important things you will ever do as a designer. So yes, it is a tough assignment. Now, I'm, yeah, Photoshop text tools, they're not awful, but they're not great. But my point is why use Photoshop for text? I would never use Photoshop for text because A, the file size just gets too big. And it's, it's just not as robust as using InDesign or Illustrator for text. So I would recommend using an InDesign or Illustrator for this assignment. Um, um, let me see, where else are we here? Point out anything goes, block, and try a couple of little unconventional tweaks. Some numbers I wanted to emphasize. I tweaked the weights a little, but also made the text one point. That's cool. I mean, I get it. The idea here, what you're telling me and what I'm getting out of this writing here is that you're trying to establish hierarchy of creating contrast. Um, by using metallics, by using scale, by using weight. And that's exactly how you uh, establish typographic hierarchy. So without further ado, let's jump to your compositions. Now, in the first composition, in all your compositions, I think we've got a nice margin here. You're adhering to the margin, and it looks like you've got a good grid set up, and it looks like you're adhering to the grid. A couple of areas where you're not adhering to the, the uh, grid or the margin is right here, here and here. So you establish your margin, right? Your margin should be equal on the right and left sides of the page. So in other words, if this is a quarter inch right here, you, your text shouldn't run any closer to the edge of the page than a quarter of an inch. And that's establishing good consistent margins. And that's really important too, because right now this appears to be a little bit off balance, even though it's just my, it's minutia. The mind picks up on it. The eye, the subconscious perceives it, and it it, it 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 sees this as being a little bit off balance. Try this if you if you just remove that headline, and you'll see what I mean. Right now, the headline, the weight of the headline is kind of counterbalancing it, so it's not too drastic. But if you were to remove that headline, you would see that this is, is a little off balance. Um, okay, let's go ahead and take a look at each individual composition. Now, the first. Composition is establishing hierarchy based on grouping, right? Which I think you've done here. But what I'm seeing is this, is, is, is I'm seeing two, three different groups. We've got the headline, we've got this, and we've got this. So you've got three different groups, right? The second design introduces one new size and one new weight. So we've got your new weights here and your new sizes here. Then you've got these three columns. But the weird thing here, Paul, is that you've got, you're mixing your alignments. And this, again, is really creating a really super uncomfortable visual tension because we've got right left align here, left align here, left align here, left align here. Then these are seem to be right aligned. And the reason I say that is because these are aligning on the right margin. They should align right here. Okay. And that would, I think that would really clean this up considerably because again, the subconscious picks up on that and the mind goes, wow, that's kind of uncomfortable. So think about that, okay? Third, uh, designing multiple contrast in weight and scale. And this, this is good, I think this, this is good. Um, here's a, 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 a contrast in scale here. There's a little bit of weight uh, variations here. 
here, and then here's your size, your, your scale. Okay, and then of course you've got your final with uh, multiple contrast and weight and scale as well as the car bleeding off the page. Now, I, I want you to keep working on this. I really do. I, I you know, I, I want you to review the, the announcement. I also want you to review the chapters in the textbook. And the announcement's fantastic. I mean, if I must say so myself, this is probably one of the better lectures in the course. And this is week, welcome to week three announcement right here. We've got the introduction video. Um, then you've got um, uh, introduction, how to, de how to design, how to establish and use a grid. And then there's a demonstration. Here's a couple of great resources linking out. Then here's a, a, a video that shows you how to set up your grid and place elements in the grid using InDesign. Uh, if you want to establish a grid using Photoshop or uh, Illustrator, go ahead and just Google. Just say, how do I, how to create a grid in um, Illustrator or in Photoshop. I'll show you how to do that. This demonstrates in uh, InDesign, but it's, it's really super easy. And then here's some examples of a three by three grid and how you can place elements in a three by three grid. Okay, and then here, we, this is great here because it shows you an actual uh, layout with the grid superimposed so you can see how the grid re, uh, uh, reacts to the uh, how the layout reacts to the grid itself a couple more resources here so definitely look at those take a look at the textbook and specifically page 101 in the textbook which does a really nice job little example now I've included this and this is in the um, Discussion board as well. It's right here. Just look for my post in discussion board and you can see this example. But here's the here's the, the example right here. So and this is fantastic. I want you to study this as well when you're um, uh, getting ready to submit your second submission here. So this is a really great job on grouping. Then over here you've got a new weight, new size. Over here you've got multiple weights, multiple sizes. And then over here you've got the, the image with multiple weights, multiple sizes. So definitely check that out and study that a little bit and really think about guiding your viewer's eye through the composition based on contrasts. Contrasts in weight, contrasts in scale. Don't forget alignment. Alignment is very, very important. That's where the grid comes in. So. Uh, just keep keep looking at this. You'll get it. You'll get it definitely. I think I think your second iteration is going to show vast improvements. Not that the first one was bad. I think the first one was fine. I do. I think that you're really showing a good understanding of how to establish typographic hierarchy. I think we can push it a little bit though. Uh, the fourth example and this example here. I think this gutter here. The gutter is the space between your columns. It's really large. So consider how you might bring this either closer and this a little closer too. So um, think about that. Okay, good job, Paul. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. But I think you've got a great start here and looking forward to seeing your final. Let me know if you have any questions at all. I'll be glad to help you out. Thanks, man.